Well, good evening. We're here again. We're doing another lesson. Um, we finished up last week talking in Exodus about Moses. We talked about how he basically through his birth. We talked about the preparation of Moses. We talked about the obedience of Moses, how he actually fulfilled God's plan for his life. We finished up with the plagues, and as we come to that, we know that the children of Israel, they were actually finally let go. We asked the question, why did God bring the children out of Egypt? And again, we looked at Exodus chapter 3, verse 7. It says that God heard their cry, and it says, for I know their sorrows. They were being punished. They were being almost abused. They were having to work. They were slaves to the Egyptians. And they were in bondage. So they cried out by reason of their afflictions. And again, as it says, that God heard their cry. And again, that he knew their sorrows. If you haven't already at this point in your life, at some point or another, I believe that you too will experience this sorrow. You're going to experience a pain that that someday you'll cry out to God. A lot of times it'll, we'll just ask a simple question, a three-letter question. Why? Why do I have to go through this? Why am I having to do this? Why are you punishing this? Or why are you making me again do what I'm having to go through? You know, we also see that this could be, this sorrow could be the death of a loved one. It could be health issues. It could be loss of finances. Maybe maybe you, you lost your job or you're going to lose your job or through fire or theft. And But one thing that we need to understand is that through all of this that God hears our cry. Even after all the children of Israel went through and all they were having to face because of being in bondage by the Egyptians they cried out and God heard their cry and also I believe that God already has a plan I believe that God has already got a plan that perhaps when we have to face the death of a loved one there's someone there that's going to be able to comfort us when we perhaps fall into bad health maybe there's someone within our church that's already been through them health issues that we're going to have to face and they could kind of guide us and they could kind of help us and they could kind of edify and lift us up and help us not to feel as though we're alone also maybe the loss of finances the job again maybe God's going to lead us to a better job you know through fire I know that a lot of times it'll bring communities together and they will rally around those that have lost their homes and theft and this might be because God wants us to see and to understand that that property that we thought was valued so great that perhaps really wasn't great at all as we continue on looking in Exodus we see that in chapter 14 how the children of Israel they came up against the Red Sea you know the Pharaoh had let them go you know the death of his firstborn was more than he could handle so he let the children of Israel go and as they were going out they came up against the Red Sea but at this point they realized that the Egyptians they were actually following them they were chasing them and a lot of them were on horses a lot of them were in chariots so they were gaining ground they were covering a lot of ground quickly and the children of Israel knew really there's no way that they could escape them but that's perhaps where we too have maybe a little lack of faith. So we see also that God had a greater plan in this situation. Whenever it came time, God told Moses basically to raise his staff and he parted the Red Sea. And the children of Israel were able to walk across on dry land. He said that he hardened the hearts of the Egyptians so that they would follow after him. And after they got in the midst of the Red Sea, he allowed the Red Sea to close and return again, and it drowned each and every Egyptian. He, God said he did this to show the Egyptians his power. We see in Exodus 14:31 it says, And Israel saw 
that the great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians and the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. Again, what I'd like to look at a little closer is the two parts where it says, and the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord. In Proverbs 9, 10, it says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And again, as we look at that word fear, we find that it is a specific sense of respect, awe, and of submission. You know, as Christians, we should fear the Lord. That's not to say that we're afraid of him. That's not to say that we're going to try to hide from him. But that's just to say that we, again, have that respect, that we are in awe, and that we submit ourselves to God and his plan for our lives. See, Moses had this fear. He submitted himself to God, and he fulfilled the plan of getting the children of Israel released from the bondage of slavery out from the Egyptians. And also, if we truly thought about the greatness of God, and we would start to understand, I think, again, what that fear of the Lord is. Because if we truly thought about the whole universe as a whole, and as we kind of start expanding and contracting in, we see that we have multiple galaxies within this universe. We are in the Milky Way galaxy. We also see that in this galaxy that we are part of a solar system. And again, in this solar system, we revolve and we go around the sun. And that's, again, we almost see the planets are submitted to the sun. And that's what we as Christians should do. We should be submitted to the S-O-N, to the Son of God, because we have gave him our lives. We have trusted in him, and we have accepted his salvation. I also believe that the fear of the Lord is the beginning, and it is the first step of salvation. The second thing, again, as we look, I want to see that we see that it says, and they believed the Lord. As we look at Romans 10, 9 and 10, it says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto salvation, and with the mouth confession is made. So... As we look at those two verses, that's kind of the final step in salvation. In other words, we have feared the Lord, the first step, and then we have believed upon the Lord, and we have accepted the fact that God sent his son to die for us, and that he is the son of God. And we believe those facts, and we also believe that God has raised him from the dead. Not only that, but we have believed within our heart and we have made confession with our mouth. If we continue to read on in Romans 10, 11, it says, For the scripture says, Whosoever believes on him will not be put to shame, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That was verse 13. And again, there's no certain group of people that is going to be able to call upon the Lord again it says whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved again it's not just for the Jews but through Jesus and through his son God extended that he extended the family of God to include us the Gentiles we also see In verse 14, it says, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? So that last part there is where we come in. And again, it asks the question, How can they call on him who they have not believed? Believe it or not, there are still people in the United States that have never heard of who really Jesus is. 
We also know that it's up to us as Christians to be his mouthpiece. It is up to us as Christians to be, you know, his hands and his feet. The second question it asks is, how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? Statistically speaking, most Christians have never witnessed. They have never shared the gospel of Christ. So if we were going to be effective and we were going to be able to answer this question of how will they believe on him who they have not heard. The, again, the only way that we can answer that question is to share the gospel. And one of the easiest ways to share the gospel is to share your own testimony. In other words, how did you get saved? Who shared the gospel with you? What all did they say to help you to understand, first of all, fear the Lord? And what all did they say to get you to believe on the Lord? A lot of times we make things harder than they are, and we think that witnessing is harder than it is. But witnessing really is just the act of obedience. And it's an act of faith. And to some extent it is an act of courage. Because a lot of times we have that fear of failure maybe but we're not called to lead every single person that we witness to to salvation we're simply there to plant the seed or sometimes we're simply put in people's path to water but it also says in the Bible that God is the one that gives the increase even Paul was witnessing to a king and in the end I believe it was King Agrippa who said, Almost thou persuadest me to be saved. Paul wrote most of the New Testament, yet he didn't save, quote unquote, lead everyone to salvation, everyone that he spoke to. The final question is, how shall they hear without a preacher? A lot of times people point and they say, well, it's the preacher's responsibility to share the gospel. Well, if you're a Christian, technically and basically, you are a preacher. A preacher is anyone that is willing to proclaim the gospel. In other words, to be a preacher, again, you have to be willing. So the question is, are we going to answer these questions? Are we going to be the mouthpiece of Jesus? Are we going to be the hands and feet of Jesus? And the final question that we perhaps have to ask ourselves is the salvation of Jesus Christ going to stop with me? Let us pray. Our most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you, God, for your word. And Lord, as we read through your scriptures and as we see how the children of Israel they they believed I just pray God that you just put people in our path and Lord that those that are willing to witness I just pray that they realize that they are preachers and a preacher is simply someone who proclaims the gospel Lord I just pray that as you put these people in our path Lord that you just guide our thoughts guide our words and guide our actions Lord that we would be able to teach and show them what it is to be saved. Lord, again, we thank you for this day that you've given us. Lord, we ask all this in the sweet name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you again, and I hope to see you soon.